So it's a pleasure and honor to be here, and has, so it also is uh, already a moment to kind of think has, so about circadian rhythms and what we know about circadian rhythms, because who is planning a circadian talk at 2 o'clock? So because 2 o'clock, all circadian physiologies know, has, so there is a little bit of bump has, so in your alertness, in your cognitive performance, because that's just one of the rhythms so your body has. And that's kind of interesting. So if you would take my advice right now, I would actually say, let's skip this talk, and so have a nap for 20 minutes, and then have 10 minutes outside, get a lot of sunlight because it's way too dark in here. But you will kind of get to that as so at the end of the talk, um, how this circadian system is actually working. And why it's also important is actually it's, a, it's one of the fundamentals that actually also works with our sleep system. And it connects the light-dark cycle to the sleep system. And we know that sleep is becoming more and more under pressure. So recent numbers from the CDC say that one out of three Americans sleep less than the recommended seven hours. And the National Sleep Foundation found that two out of three people report at least a few, we few days a week that they were not satisfied with their sleep. So that's what we call the sleep uh, epidemic. But let's go to the fundamentals and has so the rhythms that we actually have. So, and why do we have those rhythms? Why, has so if you look at it very globally, has so we spend has so uh, quite some hours at work, quite some hours at sleep, and quite some hours at leisure. And we repeat that every single day. Um, and studies kind of shown has so that there is this kind of pattern that's going on. And there is a certain entrainment of that better that actually happens to different systems. So this is a great video, and it actually shows how a lot of people has so go from one activity to another activity to another activity to the day. So this is morning, a big, big yellow blob. So a lot of people are asleep, but you see a transitioning going to home, and so and. We progress further now, and so it's getting later and later, less people sleeping, less people at home, going to the working environment, and has, so this is just a rhythm that people go to. We have activity rhythms, we have rest rhythms. This is, has, so 11 a.m., and so now you see hardly anyone has, so is asleep. Most people are at work, we get to lunch hour, and you get a lot of activity across different things. And so, and on the next part of the video, we kind of go back to the evening time. So there will be has so a leap forward has so in a few seconds. So where you kind of see now it's 9 p.m. A lot of people are awake at home, but they move into has so to sleep. So, and this happens, and this is just a sample. And I need to thank the people of Neura has so who created this great, great video. And so we didn't collect the data at all, but they show us that. And so there are these patterns in activities and, and so that's shared across a lot of hu human beings. So why is it actually working that way? It's because we first have the physical rotation just of the Earth. So it's day and night and day and night, and that's the first system. And we, as human beings, prefer to be awake during the day and sleep at the night. So then you have that second system, which I would call physiological. So, and that's actually what scientists call body clocks and so an hourglasses. So the body clock is the true circadian rhythm. So you have a rhythm of 24 hours. And so that kind of drives activity and rest or drives has so alertness and non-alertness. But on top of it, there is another process which we call the hourglass process. And that's the amount of time you spend awake. So actually has so builds up the fatigue throughout the day. But I will explain it a little bit more in deep. And then in the end, has so we as human beings, we have the rule or the, the, the mindset or the capability to kind of overrule all those kind of things that we feel in our body or all the body process that driving actually behavior. So I never, and I'm not aware of, of 
any kind of animal that has a sleep disorder or a sleep insomnia. So why? It's because they listen to what their body clock tells them and what the rotation of the earth tells them. It's time to sleep when it's dark. And of course, for nocturnal animals, it's time to sleep when it's a light. So, um, so that's interesting. So you have those three different kind of systems that needs to be in sync, uh, so to be optimally prepared for uh, your day. So, so you want to sleep in the dark period. People that did night shifts kind of know. It's very hard for a human being uh, so to sleep during the daytime because our systems are programmed to do so during nighttime. So if we would just follow that rule, uh, so then our body would love us to do have a drink at the same time every single day, have your food at the same time every ding single day, have the conversation with uh, your husband at a single day because that would be the least energy you have for the body to adjust to. And of course, that's not real life. So, getting to the true biological clock. So we have the rotation of the Earth on the one hand, so then of course we have the behavior of the human being that can say, hey, I can go to bed or I can take a nap. But in the middle of this, it actually has so that biological clock. And that biological clock is a very tiny structure in your brain, and it's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. It's only a few thousands of cells, and it actually is the dominating clock of your body. So it has a kind of period of a little bit more than 24 hours. So, and what it actually would mean that if I put you has so in an environment has so where there is no other cue, so you would kind of sleep later and later and later if you would stay in that kind of environment for days. So it's a, it's a not that accurate clock. But luckily, has so the body was very smart and they built in a system to sync that clock every single day so with the rotation of the earth. So there are in your eye cells that are actually not doing visual processing, but they do biological processing and sending a signal to that biological clock and saying, hey, it's light outside, so you should be awake. Hey, it's dark, it's time to doze off. So that clock is kind of synced with the outside world by the sun, by the outside light, and it's called a Zeitgeber, that's German for time giver. Um, for a long, long time, we thought there was only one single clock. Uh, but recent studies made it kind of possible to find out that uh, so we have that clock in our brain, but that's only the master clock. So, and actually, a lot of different organs have clocks themselves. And that also explains why it's so hard, uh, so if you are in a jet lag or go move to another time zone, to get back on track again, because it's not only that master clock head that needs to be reset it, and as a rule of thumb, uh, so that clock is very hard to reset because it takes approximately uh, so one day to move that master clock for one hour. So if you have a time difference or time zone difference of three hours, it will take you three days to adjust that master clock. But now you don't only have to reset that master clock, you also need to reset all those organ clocks. So you can imagine actually what happens uh, so if those things don't get in sync. So, and that's a really has so interesting discovery and they mainly focused on all the kind of organs that were kind of uh, involved in the digestive system and in the metabolics because there was a huge link between circadian misalignment, sleep disorders, and also obesity. Um, but that clock is kind of giving pulses to all those organs. So, has, so it kind of regulates, and it's a very simplified picture, but it kind of regulates like, okay, alertness is on top over there, has, so, and then actually has, so this is best for muscle performance, and this is where you need to repair cells, so it gives the other clocks has, so that pulse when to do something. So, and as I said before, has, so that clock couldn't do without the light switch. Has, so because if we don't have that light switch, has, so then uh, we would run out of sync with the rotation of the Earth. So, so and that's what you see. Has, so what you want to do is totally keep in sync. Um, it's not the only side gaber. Has, so light is the most important side gaber. 
So, and I'm lucky because I have spots on me, so that's good, so I, I'm staying awake right now. But uh, we have other side givers, like meal intake, as we heard before in the previous talk, uh, like temperature. Yeah, so, hey, this system is an ancient system, so it has been built over years. But also uh, activity. So, and that's actually has so where you then get to has so those two systems. So, and we have the circadian system. And then the hourglass system kind of add up to each other, and that's how scientists look into sleep and look into those rhythms. So you see here the circadian rhythm in red, so, and then that's steered by the suprachiasmatic nucleus, nucleus. So then you see here has so called process S, has so, which is the hourglass process, and that has been driven by the hours awake and is related to. Uh, a, 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 car a message carrier uh, in the body which is called adenosine. So, and how we then kind of uh, picture it is that if you have now between those slopes, uh, so the biggest, uh, so the biggest uh, uh, surface, then uh, you have the uh, greatest urge to sleep. So what you see over here, you start off in the morning, uh, so um, you're totally zero, and then uh, the hourglass fills and fills and fills and fills. So the sleep pressure goes up. You see also the changes in the circadian system, and the circadian system at night is also pointing to sleep, sleep. So, and that's how it works together. And you can kind of imagine that if a clock can only shift one hour, if you travel time zones, uh, so, but your sleep drive is just related to uh, so the amount of, hour, amount of hours you spend awake, that this system has, so is going off has, so when you travel. Um, so if you then have, of course, a resultant of those two graphs, then it looks a little bit like this. Uh, so you have a low alertness level. Uh, so in the beginning of the day, you kind of know that when you wake up, so you're not on the top of the game. Uh, so it gets more and more and more. So and actually, it's kind of interesting to see uh, so that then uh, so you hit that time uh, so that you really uh, so want to sleep because it builds up and then it drops again. So. Um, it's not only a regulator of bodily functions and liver functions and heart rate, but it also is a, f uh, a driving mood and a driving uh, other kinds of behaviors and cognition. Uh, so these studies, uh, so we are already carried out in the, in, in the last century, mainly because uh, so it's, it's very hard to do those studies. What they try to do is to see what is the contribution of that process S and what is the contribution of that process C, so the circadian and the sleep drive, and see whether cognition was either impacted uh, so by one or by the other. So, and what you see here, uh, so on the left panel, that you see a nice circadian fluctuation uh, so of all uh, cognitive tasks and alertness. Uh, so, and then uh, so on the Right panel of the left panel, you see that there is also a modulation as so based on the time spent awake. So what you then kind of know, it's kind of affected by both systems. And again, these studies has so are very hard to carry out has so because you need to put people has so into kind of bunkers has so where they don't get any kind of cues to really kind of disentangle. And it's unfortunately for science that it's very hard nowadays actually to get has so volunteers for those studies anymore uh, because nobody wants to live with their cell phone has so less if, uh, or miss their cell phone for 24 hours. So um, so these were really great great uh, studies. So. So not only for uh, so cognitive brain functions, but also for mood-related uh, brain functions and how we experience uh, so how happy we are and how involved we are. Um, those studies you can find less, and I think the reason for that is that uh, so chronobiologists uh, so are really people that want to measure things, uh, so and not that much uh, so ask things, uh, so self-report is not that important. But there are luckily a few studies that really pointing out that even uh, so the mood and how you feel is related to both that circadian clock, uh, so but also uh, so to, to the time spent awake. Um, so summarizing, uh, so we have that master clock, and that master clock has so impacts physiology and psychology. So, uh, so it has subclocks, uh, so and the light sinks to uh, actually the 
day-night cycle. So it's the day-night cycle that gives the input to the master clock, and that's why the master clock has, so imposes the 24-hour rhythm upon our body. So, and then, has, so the great thing is, has, so if you want to keep in best health and best, has the lowest effort of your body, then keep everything in sync. And it's kind of interesting because also in 2017, has, so the Nobel Prize has, for science and or in this case, in medicine, has so went to the people that actually and uh, discovered the molecular mechanism had behind has, so the biological clock. So that was a great applause had to those three researchers. I think it's Rosbash, Young, and uh, Tall, if I remember uh, correctly, Hall. So and that was a breakthrough because until now, has, so sleep hardly got any attention, and circadian clocks got hardly any attention. And why? Is that the case? It's because it is so hard to measure in a really objective way. Sleep doctors are already saying it for years. Sleep should be the fifth vital sign. Uh, so, but it is not the vital sign because the only thing you can think about sleep or ask about sleep is self-report. So the doctor asks you, "Oh, how did you sleep?" So, and then sleep scientists kind of know that you probably don't know. Uh, because sleep is an unconscious period. So how should you actually be very correct in the recall of that unconscious period? So most of the people, if I ask you, like, how many hours do you sl do you, did you sleep last night? They do the calculation. It's so like, oh, hey, I went to bed at uh, so 11, uh, so my alarm clock was at 7, so I slept for 8 hours. Great, but that's bedtime. Huh? So, and you not all the time that you uh, so are in bed, uh, so you actually sleep. It takes time to fall asleep, but also during the night you most likely uh, so awake for 30 to 40 minutes, but you're totally unaware of it because the brain kind of has uh, so uh, removes that recollection of being awake. So, um, the interesting thing is that this clock system is a very Asian system. So that also means that it had all this entrainment, or we should call it now machine learning. Uh, so back in the days, uh, so when there was no artificial light, so when there was no central heating, uh, so when food was scarce, uh, so you not, could not go to the McDonald's and just grab a burger uh, so, or to any store. Uh, so you could not uh, have a flight and go to another time zone. So, and this is uh, so how that system was entrained. So, and it's interesting because a lot of those cues that, were import that are important to that system actually don't longer exist. So, because we have central heating, we spend more uh, so indoors. So, uh, going to the next slide, it's really we doing the opposite of what that whole system was entrained uh, to as being a good input. So, less light during the day. Back in the days, you would have been outside right now. You can uh, look, uh, so there's a little bit leakage of the sunlight. That's the level outside. This is the level inside, and it's horrible. And even, uh, so if you go into an office, uh, so that light level is nothing compared to the sunlight level. So, you're giving now a system, that system, that biological system, hey, it's darker throughout the day. And then in the evening time, uh, so we're sitting uh, so on a bench and we're working with our iPad or any tablet, and that's a huge amount of light. And that amount of light is actually saying to the brain, oh, it's light, it's still daytime. Oh, it's light, it's still daytime. So with the consequences, oh, it's light, it's still daytime, you should be active, you should be not sleeping. So, and that's where we kind of see nowadays that, and so we have this old system that tries to steer, and so the biological clock and all, our, all our, our bodily functions and our mental functions, but the input is so different. So how should we actually get it back on track? So, so the consequences, total derailing of the system, and then the long-term consequences, because, hey, the short-term consequences is that you don't sleep well, you cannot concentrate, and you are a little bit moody. Uh, so um, 
The long-term consequences, both from circadian misalignment and from sleep disruption, go a little bit further. And we don't have that much data on it. It's mostly epidemiological research with a single question as so on, how did you sleep? But we kind of find out. It's a key risk factor for most mental disorders. It's a key risk factor for cardiac arrest. It's a key factor for cancer. So we can go on and on, and the list is only adding. So why? Because we are kind of misaligning a bodily system. So, so it's time to get it all in sync again. And that's actually, I think, where technology comes in. Because as I said before, uh, we didn't have access to a sleep lab. Most of them don't. People didn't have uh, an access on whether to see whether this light is okay or not. But new technology is actually has so making that change available. Uh, so, and this is a very simplified uh, behavioral change kind of paradigm. So you measure something, you give the awareness back to the user. The user is aware that there is a change and then there might be a trigger to change. And then you can measure it again. So, and that's what we actually want to see with all these kind of health-related behaviors. Uh, so we can actually have so aid it has so with a lot of technology. So, and actually has so, has so I'm wearing a device right here now, which is taking my light levels. So tonight I have a perfect picture of all the light levels that I got, uh, so and what, at what time I got them, and they can then kind of advise me as so what to do. So, related to the previous talk, um, Food intake is very important, and if you could get has so a true and solid rhythmicity in your food intake, that's very good impact to your biological clock. So don't snack, has so forget about the four o'clock break, and has so don't have that big jar with all kinds of kind of candy bars. It's not good. Try to limit yourself. Like it's a breakfast, it's a lunch, has so and it's a dinner. So. Um, because food intake at different times just gives the body, different, uh, the body clock different signals. Um, the same is true as so for being active as so, um, and being at rest. So try to have a lot of activity through the day. So spend, for instance, your lunch time as so outside and do a walk. Because then actually at the mid of your day, you're giving the best signal to the clock because you're actually saying like, hey, I'm active right now and I'm getting a lot of light. So you give the input like, hey, it's midday. So uh, don't try to engage in too much physical activity as so at night. Uh, so don't go to the gym and try to run seven miles because it's actually giving the clock and also your sleep system uh, to uh, the message like, oh, uh, so I'm very active, so it's actually still day daytime. So it's confusing. But we have the tools to kind of give you the information when you're active and when you're at rest, and how to change it. So, uh, and we now have sleep tracking. So, and that was kind of not expected for a long, long time. Uh, so, even for doctors, they could not measure sleep. You need to go to a lab, and then they put all the electrodes on your brain, and you stay in a hospital bed. So now, uh, so, and it's actually one of the things where I think has uh, so. The, the, the makers and the, the manufacturers were ahead of the scientists, and so they developed all kinds of sleep trackers. And again, from a behavioral perspective, sleep tracking per se doesn't change that much. It's just like with weight management, and so standing on your weight, waiting scale or your scale every single morning doesn't make you lose calories, and so it is less food intake and moving more that, uh, so that is good for your, for your management. So measuring your sleep doesn't necessarily change the way you sleep. So that's why uh, so we rather think of sleep management, uh, so where you have a connection between, uh, so you measure your sleep and you give the user the tools uh, so to actually also improve their sleep. And this is also where there is a big differentiation between sleep and fitness or nutrition is that there can be all kinds of different problems related to sleep. So it can be your onset, it can be your maintenance, it can be the way that you feel waking up, so, and the user doesn't know. So, and this is actually the company that I'm working right now for, has, so we don't want to actually has, so just provide you a tracker, but has, so we want to provide you a full system, and we want to work has, so with all the manufacturers has, so in the world that actually has, so have these kind 
of propositions, and we want to make sure uh, so that they really work because in the world of sleep, there's a lot of snake oil. So a lot of products that you can buy uh, so are actually not delivering uh, so the promise. But hey, if you have so many people uh, with a complaint, there are a lot of people that just uh, so smell easy cash. Um, but back to light, because uh, so that was what this talk is also dealing. It's the key side gaber. So for light, we could kind of have the same idea. So that means that you should measure light, just as I'm doing right now, uh, so you get the awareness, and then you can, can kind of trigger the change. So the interesting thing is, all the different elements to do this in a very good way with technology are already there, but nobody is connecting the dots. And I think that's also why a conference like this is a very good place, because we have so many people of different areas, so here is where you can connect the dots. So, two simple, uh, so, and sorry, I see the, the, there's something wrong with the slide, but uh, two simple trackers, so this one that I'm wearing here is a list tracker, uh, so it measures your, your light, the other one is a sleep sun sprite, so you have a simple device that you can wear, it gives you the input, uh, so it makes you aware of what you are actually doing with your light. So it measures light and it gives you the awareness. Then there are a lot of existing components in the market that actually can change uh, so the light input that you get. So for instance, in my home, I has, have installed a Philips U system. Uh, so that's not surprising because I used to work for Philips, but I can actually have change uh, so my lighting settings to every moment of the day. So if you come to my home at night, uh, so the brightest color setting that you will see is orange. Uh, because I know blue light spectrum at that time is not very good. So, uh, so and when I want to work, uh, so then I actually crank it up and it's, it, it, it's white light because I know that white light uh, triggers uh, so the alertness. But I try, and try to avoid uh, having bright light in the evening because I know it disrupts actually my sleep. So, other components are already there. Uh, so, like for instance, the healthy good night sleep from, uh, from either has Sora or from uh, a Lighting Science Group. What they said is like, it's interesting. We go into this energy saving mode and we go in uh, so to use LED light. But then if you look into the spectrum of LED light, there is a lot of blue light in a, a LED light. And actually blue is the trigger has uh, so to do biological clock and saying it's daytime. So they developed a light which is still very pleasant but totally blue, uh, blue deprived. So this would be great actually has so to have these in your bathroom connected to your bedroom because there's no reason has so to has so have a high alertness level has so when you're at night visit, visiting the bathroom or anyways has so even before bedtime so in your in your bedroom so um, and there are many, many I initiatives, uh, so, and I saw them, and I saw them in incubator states, that all the offices should have dynamic lighting solutions. So when you come in, uh, so in the day, uh, so it's still a little bit dim, just like it would be outside, then there is a peak uh, so throughout the day, just like it's outside, and then it, when uh, so five o'clock is nearing, it goes down a little bit, to at least get you in sync with the dynamics that the biological clock was untrained to. So, Interesting, it's there, but of course it's, it's at the cost and a lot of companies and a lot of offices don't invest in it. So, um, so I think and truly believe that the next step is all about connecting the dots. Uh, so, um, because we now work in silos, you have the food intake apps, so you have the fitness apps, you have the sleep apps, uh, so you have light exposure, you have, you have everything, but they are all different apps. And actually, those systems interact in your body. And as I said before, it's the rotation of the earth going into the biological system and the biological clock, the biological clock driving the sleep. We voluntarily have so ignoring everything and going to bed very late uh, because we enjoy life too much. Uh, so another episode of Netflix and another episode of Netflix and we keep procrastinating our sleep period. So, um, but if you connect the dots, you can get aware of it and you can take action out of it. So, um, so that's actually the end of my talk. And the main thing is, uh, so try to listen to your body. If you're asleep, don't take a Coke uh, so or a cup of coffee but get some rest, uh, so, 
or get some extra outside light because keeping in sync with your body clock is just way better for your health and a long-term outcome. Thank you very much.